The following operator training video is for the Hobart FT-1000 series flight type dish machine. This video is intended to assist in training the operator and is a supplement to the operation manual. If you have any questions following this video or need more information, please consult the operation manual that came with your machine. Replacement manuals can be obtained from your local Hobart office. The Hobart FT-1000 flight type dish machine is a fully automatic, continuous racking dish machine that cleans up to 14,316 dishes per hour. The FT-1000 is available in the base, energy recovery, and advances models with a variety of features to meet your wear washing needs. For information on your FT-1000 model, refer to the data plate on the side of the control box. The FT-1000 contains loading and unloading sections and is available in a left to right or right to left configuration. Wear is loaded directly onto the conveyor to pass through the wash, rinse and dry, if applicable, zones. This video will explain basic operating procedures including setup, operation, cleaning and programming. Operation Before beginning operation, Check to be sure that the machine is set up correctly. Open the machine doors and ensure all components are in their proper operating positions before beginning operation. All strainer pans and scrap baskets must be properly installed in each section. For machines equipped with an ASR section, the ASR arms, strainer pan and soil collector standpipe must also be properly installed. The external scrap basket must be properly installed beneath the load of the machine. All upper and lower wash arms must be properly installed in each section. The dual rinse and final rinse arms must also be properly installed. Wash arm sliders must also be placed in the closed position. Be sure to check both upper and lower wash arms to ensure that all wash arm sliders are in the closed position. All curtains must be properly installed. Refer to the curtain chart on the machine's control box for proper curtain configuration. This information is also available in your operation manual. All tank drains must be placed in the closed position. For energy recovery and advances models containing a master drain, this must be placed in the open position. Your master drain may be located either at the load or unload of the dish machine. If so equipped, all water and steam supply valves must be opened and the electric supply turned on before the machine will function. When ready to begin operation, close all drains and doors. The drain handles are located near the floor at the front of each tank. Swing drain handles to the right to close, toward the image of the full tank, and to the left to open, toward the image of the tank draining. On energy recovery and advances machines equipped with a master drain, open the master drain located at either the load or unload end of the machine. Swing the master drain toward the green circle to open, and toward the red circle to close. During machine operation, all tank drains are to remain closed or toward the image of the full tank, and the master drain is to remain open or toward the green circle. For machines equipped with Auto Clean and Auto D Lime, follow the drain instructions on the controls keypad during those processes for proper drain orientation. When the machine is ready to fill, press the power key on the keypad, which is located on the door of the control box. The display will light up and the machine begins to fill automatically. During fill, tanks filling displays on the keypad. Tanks will be full in approximately 10 to 15 minutes. If a door is not closed, doors open displays on the keypad. If a drain is not closed, drains open displays on the keypad. Opening a door during the fill cycle shuts off the fill valves. Close the door to resume the fill cycle. When all tanks are full, 
the fill valves will automatically shut off and the water temperatures will display for each tank. The maintenance fill feature adds water to the tanks if required to maintain proper water levels during operation. After the water level raises the lower float in each tank, the wash, rinse, and dual rinse tanks begin to heat. If the water level drops below the lower float in any tank, the heat shuts off and filling resumes on the affected tank or tanks. When the water level reaches the lower float, heating resumes. When the machine is ready to operate and has reached temperature, start the motors for the conveyor, pumps, and blower dryer if equipped by pressing the green start switch located at either the load or unload end of the machine, or the green start button on the control box keypad. Press the red stop switch to stop the conveyor, pumps, and blower dryer motors. Stop switches are located at the load and unload end, as well as on the control keypad. All tank temperatures display on the keypad when the machine is on and or in operation. The final rinse temperature does not display until the wear reaches the rinse zone. When the wear reaches the rinse zone, the final rinse water temperature displays. After the wear exits the rinse zone, final rinse temperature display will revert back to dashes. If wear reaches the unload end of the machine and trips the dish limit switch, the conveyor and final rinse shut off. The keypad displays the tank temperatures along with unload dishes across the bottom. After the wear is removed and the dish limit returns to operating position, normal operation resumes. If wear is not unloaded, the dish limit switch does not reset and the dish limit auto timer counts down for one minute and then shuts off the pumps and blower dryer if equipped. The display continues to show the tank temperatures and unload dishes. If no wear enters the machine for a preset amount of time, the auto timer automatically shuts off the machine. The tanks continue to maintain required temperatures. To resume operation, press the green start switch located at either end of the machine or on the control keypad. Note, the auto timer shut off setting can be adjusted as shown in the parameters menu of your operation manual. During machine operation, the strainer baskets can fill with food soil and affect dishwasher operation. The baskets must be emptied periodically. Stop the machine and open the access doors. Strainers are located immediately inside of the tanks toward the front. The external scrap basket at the load section should also be emptied periodically as needed and can be done without interrupting machine operation. When required, Remove and empty the scrap basket and replace when done. To load the machine, pre-scrap dishes thoroughly to remove large food particles and debris. All plates, saucers, trays, etc. should be loaded on the conveyor in an inclined position. Bowls should be loaded upside down. Silverware and other utensils must be washed in rags to prevent loss of items. Failing to do so could cause the conveyor to jam and damage wear or machine components. Note, never use steel wool on wear to be loaded into the dishwashing machine. This could introduce surface corrosion, which could eventually interfere with machine operation. Note, do not attempt to wash large items such as pots, pans, trays, etc. without first checking to make sure they fit through the machine opening. Such items must not be washed in the dishwasher unless they will easily pass through. Note, do not allow foreign objects to enter the unit, especially metallic contaminants. To unload, remove dishes from the conveyor. If a dish hits the dish limit, the conveyor stops and pumps run for one minute before shutting off. Unload the conveyor starting with the wear furthest from the dish limit. Remove the wear that is striking the dish limit last. The machine will automatically restart once the dish is removed. The water temperatures in the tanks and rinse arms are monitored electronically and are displayed on the control box keypad display. The display should be checked periodically to ensure that proper temperatures are being maintained. Note, 
Refer to the hot water sanitizing label on the side of the control box for minimum temperature settings. The conveyor speed can be adjusted if required to meet the washing needs of various wear. To change the speed, press the speed selection button, which features an image of wear and is located below the digital display on the keypad. Pressing the key once will display the current speed selection on the bottom of the display. Pressing the button a second or third time will toggle the next available selections. Speed low, speed medium, speed high. Cleaning. The dishwasher must be thoroughly cleaned at the end of each working shift or after each meal period. For machines equipped with auto clean, it is recommended that a manual cleaning be completed once per day. Warning, disconnect electrical power supply or supplies and follow the lockout tagout procedures before beginning cleaning. There may be multiple circuits. Be sure all circuits are disconnected. Before beginning a manual cleaning, push the power key on the keypad to turn the machine off. Open all front access doors. Drain the machine by swinging each of the tank drain handles to the left toward the image of the tank draining, as shown on the labels located above each tank drain. Draining the tanks requires approximately 5 to 10 minutes. Remove and clean the curtains. Before removing the strainer baskets and pans, clean the machine interior and all tank shelves using a good hose and spray nozzle. Flush all debris toward the strainers. Remove the wash arms by lifting up on the arm, clearing the tab from the notch in the wash arm support track. Slide upper arms forward, swinging the front of the arm down. Slide the lower arms forward. Tilt the arms down toward the tank, allowing any water to drain before removing. Once removed, clean the arms in a sink, opening the slider bars to flush food soil from the arms. Remove the strainer baskets and strainer pans, including the dual rinse strainer pan. Empty strainers and scrap baskets into a trash receptacle or food waste disposer. Note, do not strike the strainer pans or strainer basket on solid objects to dislodge debris. Scrub the strainer pans and baskets in a sink. Remove the dual rinse and final rinse arms and clean debris from the nozzles and arms. When cleaning, use only products formulated to be safe on stainless steel. Flush tanks with a water hose, removing any accumulation of food soil. When cleaning is complete, reinstall all arms in their proper location and orientation. Ensure that the upper arm nozzles point downward and the lower arm nozzles point upward. To install arms, slide manifolds on the supports toward the rear of the machine and ensure the tabs on the sides of the arms drop into the notches in the supports. Replace the clean strainer pans and baskets. Reinstall the curtains according to the curtain chart located on the front of the control box or refer to your operation manual. Clean the machine exterior like any other stainless steel appliance with a damp cloth and mild soapy water. Spray the channels where the sensors are located at the load end of the machine. Note, do not attempt to clean these with any metallic object, as damage to the sensors can occur. Machines equipped with automatic soil removal, or ASR, feature an additional section located immediately after the load. During machine operation, the ASR section captures food soil and pumps it to the external scrap basket located beneath the load end of the machine. To empty the external scrap basket during machine operation, remove the basket, empty and replace it. The machine will continue to operate unless the stop button is pressed at the load, unload, or on the keypad located at the control box. The ASR section must also be thoroughly cleaned with the rest of the machine at the end of each working shift or after each meal period. To clean the ASR system, remove the external scrap basket located beneath the load section. Empty food soil, rinse basket in sink, and replace. Remove the upper and lower ASR wash arms. To remove the upper arm, pull back on the tab. 
allow the arm to drop and pull out. To remove the lower arm, pull up slightly and pull the arm out. Rinse both arms in a sink and check to be sure all nozzles are clear of debris. Inside of the ASR section, remove the strainer pan and then remove the soil collector standpipe. Thoroughly clean these components in a sink using a sprayer hose. Use a hose to spray down the inside of the ASR section as well. Replace all components when complete. To replace the soil collector standpipe, drop the bottom of the tube into the drain body located at the bottom of the ASR tank. Place the strainer basket on top, noting that it sits slightly higher than the tank. Replace the lower wash arm by following the guide rail and pushing the tube into place in the manifold. Replace the upper wash arm by pushing the tube into the upper manifold, pushing up and snapping into place. Auto Clean The Auto Clean cycle is designed for use in between meal periods or at the end of the day. For machines equipped with Auto Clean, it is recommended that a thorough manual cleaning be completed once per day. To perform the Auto Clean procedure, complete the following steps. Press the blue Auto Clean button located beneath the digital display on the control box keypad to begin. The display will prompt the operator to complete a few tasks before beginning the auto clean cycle. The display will briefly show press stop key at any time to abort auto clean cycle before proceeding to the next step. Close master drain. Close the master drain valve, swinging toward the red circle. The master drain on your machine may be located at either the load or the unload end of the machine. Open all tank drains. Open all tank drains, swinging toward the image of the tank draining on the label. Ensure that all tank drains are open. The display will read, Tanks draining. Please wait a few seconds. At this time, the machine is draining the water in the tanks through the master drain automatic valve. Clean and replace strainer baskets. Open wash arm sliders. Close doors. Press enter when done. For machines equipped with automatic soil removal, ensure that the soil collector standpipe and strainer pan are thoroughly cleaned and then replaced. Once enter is pressed, the display will read, no additional user intervention required. Auto clean will take approximately 26 minutes. At this time, the machine is in the self-cleaning mode. Wash pumps will run to flush food soil from the wash arms. And then auto clean nozzles located at the rear of each chamber will wash each section. Once the auto clean cycle is complete, the display will read auto clean complete, press enter key to refill, otherwise machine will power down in 60 seconds. If the operator does not press any key, the machine will power down after the set amount of time designated by the energy saver mode, which is adjustable in the manager menu of the controls. If the operator presses a key to start the machine after it has been in energy saver mode, they will be returned to the auto clean in progress screen to be prompted to complete steps to begin normal operation. This will ensure that all steps are completed properly to begin operation. To complete the steps to begin operation once the auto clean cycle has ended, press enter on the control keypad display as prompted. The machine will display the following. Open master drain. Open the master drain valve, swinging toward the green circle. The master drain on your machine may be located at either the load or the unload end of the machine. Close tank drains. Close all tank drains swinging toward the image of the full tank. Ensure all tank drains are closed. Pressing the back button at any time during the auto clean process will cancel the auto clean cycle. The display will read auto clean cycle canceled. Follow instructions to prepare for washing. Auto D-Lime. The Auto D-Lime cycle is designed to provide your machine with a custom D-Lime schedule based on machine usage and your local water conditions. To perform the Auto D-Lime procedure, complete the following steps. When the display prompts D-Lime recommended, 
refer to the programming section of your operating manual when ready to initiate the D-Lime cycle. From the manager mode, navigate to the actions menu. and scroll down to Run D-Lime Cycle. Press the Enter key. The display will briefly read, Press Stop key at any time to abort D-Lime Cycle before proceeding to the next step. The display will prompt the operator to complete a few tasks before beginning the Auto D-Lime Cycle. Place D-Lime Pop Hose in D-Lime Solution. Press Enter when done. Place the hose from the D-Lime chemical pump located at the unload end of the machine into the D-Lime solution container. Then, press Enter. Open all tank drains. Leave all drains open. Open all tank drains by swinging them toward the image of the tank draining. Ensure all tank drains are open. Clean strainer baskets, then replace. Press Enter when done. Tanks draining, please wait. The tanks will continue to drain before moving to the next step. Close master drain. Close the master drain, swinging the drain toward the red circle. Your master drain may be located at either the load or the unload end of the machine. Tanks filling. Please wait. Pour D-Lime into tank one. Press enter when done. The display prompts the user to pour a certain amount of D-Lime solution into tank 1, which is labeled with a D-Lime tank label and outlined in green. The amount of D-Lime solution the user will be prompted to pour into tank 1 is dependent upon the custom D-Lime schedule designed for the machine. Pour solution into tank, close doors, and press enter. D-Lime cycle running. Approximate time left. At this time, the machine is completing the D-Lime cycle. No additional user intervention is required. The machine will automatically flush with D-Lime solution, drain, refill to rinse, and then drain. The machine will be ready to begin normal operation or will automatically shut down after the cycle is complete. Once the cycle is complete, the display will read, Auto D-Lime complete. Press Enter key to refill. Otherwise, machine will power down in five minutes. If the operator does not press any key, the machine will power down after the set amount of time designated by the energy saver mode, which is adjustable in the manager menu of the controls. To complete the steps to begin operation once the auto D-Lime cycle has ended, press enter on the control keypad display as prompted. The machine will walk the operator through the steps required to begin normal operation. The machine will display the following. Open master drain. After refilling the machine or powering the machine back up from a power down, open the master drain located at either the load or unload end of the machine. Swing the handle toward the green circle. Close tank drains. Close all tank drains located at the bottom of each tank. Ensure all tank drains are closed toward the image of the full tank on the label machine will be ready to begin normal operation. Pressing the back button at any time during the auto D-Lime process will cancel the cycle. Be sure to follow the prompts listed on the display. If the D-Lime solution has not yet been introduced into the system, the display will read, tanks rinsed and ready for wash. Press enter to refill, or the machine will power down in five minutes. If the D-Lime solution has been introduced into the system, the display will read D-Lime solution in tanks, press enter key to drain and rinse tanks. Programming. The advanced digital controls on your dishwasher allow several setup and customization options. Because these options can affect the operation of the machine, they are locked out by default from the factory. To unlock them for editing, the security level must be elevated to an appropriate level. It is recommended to keep the dishwasher in the lowest security level possible at all times. This will prevent options from being inadvertently or intentionally modified from what is expected or acceptable. The security level will automatically revert back to the lowest allowable level 
either operator or super operator, as described in your operation manual, when any of the following occur. 1. No keys on the keypad are pressed for 10 minutes or more. 2. The machine is placed in standby by pressing the power key. 3. An invalid security code is entered on the Enter Security Code screen. The names and descriptions of the various security levels are listed from the lowest level to the highest level and can be found in your operation manual. A higher security level includes all of the abilities of the lower levels plus some extra abilities as described in the operation manual. Note, the security level does not, by itself, affect the operation of the machine or inhibit the use of any of the start, stop, or power keys or buttons. All of these basic functions are always available in any security level. Operator. This is the most basic security level and is enabled by default when the unit is powered up as initially set by the factory. No security code is required to enter this security level. This level only allows entering the security code to elevate the current security level to something higher. Super Operator. This security level can be set up to the default level when the unit is powered up, instead of the operator security level. Instructions on how to complete this can be found in your operation manual. If Super Operator is set up to be the default level, the operator security level will not be accessible until Super Operator access is disabled by a manager or by Hobart service. The Super Operator level does not require a security code to be entered by the user but is only accessible if enabled by a manager or Hobart service. A super operator is granted access to a few of the menu options, but not as many as in the manager security level. The available options for a super operator are described in the parameters menu of your operation manual. A manager or Hobart service technician can enable or disable the security level via the manager or service programming parameters refer to the Navigating the Parameters menu for more details. Manager. This security level is the highest level attainable by the user. It requires the manager code to be entered before the security level will be elevated to manager. This security level offers unrestricted access to all of the options listed in the Parameters menu. Because of this, it is recommended that the power to the machine be cycled off and on when access to the manager level options are no longer explicitly needed. The security code for the manager level can be changed by a kitchen manager or anyone with the manager code. The default code is listed in the operation manual in a section titled Entering the Operation Parameters Menu. As such, it is recommended that the code be changed from the default and stored in a safe place where all kitchen managers, but no one else, can access it. If the code is ever lost or forgotten, it can be reset by Hobart Service. Note, having Hobart Service reset the manager code is not covered under either the basic or the extended warranty. The dishwasher is equipped with electronic digital controls to allow greater precision for cleaning wear, maintaining required tank temperatures, and other advanced functions. Some of these functions are customizable to suit the needs of your kitchen operation. All customization is performed through the on-screen menu using the up, down menu, enter, and stop back keys located on the keypad on the control box. The following prompts are used inside the menus. The up and down arrow keys are used to change parameter values and to navigate the menu. The enter key is used to accept a value, perform a specified action, or enter a submenu. The back key will always revert back to the previous menu screen. The text just to the right of the greater than symbol on the display screen shows what action or command will occur by pressing the enter key. To enter the manager menu, one, press the menu key from the main screen. This will take you to the main menu. Two, with the greater than symbol to the left of manager, press the enter key. This will take you to the enter security code screen. Three, you are prompted with four asterisks. 
4. Use the up and down keys to change the digit of the security code to the appropriate value. Note, the default security code to enter manager programming is 1001. This code can be changed by anyone with this knowledge, and it is recommended to change it from the default. If the code is ever lost for some reason, it can be reset by Hobart Service. Note, resetting the code is not covered under warranty, whether you are in the initial warranty period or in the extended warranty period. 5. Press the Enter key to move to the next digit to the right. 6. Repeat the steps for each digit. After pressing Enter on the fourth digit, you will be in the Manager menu. 7. Press up and down keys repeatedly until the greater than symbol is to the left of the desired option. And then press the Enter key. The Manager options are About, Actions, Logs, and Operation Parameters. The About screen displays the following information. Machine Model, Control Board Revision, Relay Board Revision, Software Version, Sanitizing Mode, and Service Number. The Actions menu provides the following options. Change Manager Code allows the manager's security code to be changed from the default code. Reverse Jog allows the conveyor to be jogged in the reverse direction in case there is a conveyor jam. When entering this mode, the following message is displayed. Be sure all personnel are clear of conveyor. Press button in upper control box while pressing enter. Exit without jogging. Reverse jog conveyor. To reverse jog the conveyor, press the enter button with the greater than symbol located to the left of the reverse jog conveyor, while also pressing the green button located behind the upper control box door. Run D-Lime Cycle. This initiates the auto D-Lime Cycle, which is also outlined in the cleaning procedures of this video, as well as your operation manual. Set Date Time. Enter this screen to set a date and time. Entering the Logs menu will provide the following options. D-Lime Counter displays the time remaining before D-Lime recommendation is displayed. This also allows the ability to clear the D-Lime Counter. Error Log displays the previous errors along with the date and time that the errors occurred. Statistics Entering the Statistics screen will display the following information. Time of operation, run time percent, rinse time, and fill time. The parameters can be changed any time the display is active, which is when the machine is operating or in idle mode. Hobart believes that the default settings that leave the factory are suitable for the majority of kitchen operations. However, there are cases where the kitchen managers may find the need to change one or more options. The Parameters menu allows these changes. Within the Parameters menu, the manager, or in some cases, the operator, may modify factory default settings. The menu structure and description of each option are detailed in your operation manual, including the parameter name, a short description, a list of possible values the parameter can have, the factory default value based on the specific dishwasher model, and the security level required to access that parameter. Please contact Hobart Service if you're uncomfortable changing any setting or are unsure which ones to change. For regular or recommended maintenance required, refer to the maintenance section of your operation manual. For any additional troubleshooting, such as wear not being cleaned, spotting of wear, or any other issues, refer to the troubleshooting list in your operation manual. This has been the operator training video for the Hobart FT-1000 series flight type dish machine. If you have further questions, consult your operation manual. Visit our website at www.hobartcorp.com or contact your Hobart representative.